Welcome to the next video in the series where I'll show you how to actually download the URSIM software, how to get it from your downloads folder into your Ubuntu home directory, and then how to follow the instructions and how to modify it to make it work in Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So we'll get the software from here, which is our Universal Robots support website, and then we want to click on download. We're going to select the E-Series robot. We're going to select a type of download as software. We're going to select the type of software as the offline simulator. We're going to take the Linux operating system rather than the non-Linux. If we took the non-Linux, we'd get a virtual machine, but here we're going to get the, the Tarjot GZ file. And then we're going to select the latest version. Now, this version, I haven't uh, um, downloaded this one. I have the previous version installed. Um, it tells us that it's um, that this one is based. Uh, it's been tested in uh, Ubuntu 14.04. It gives us some installation instructions here, and essentially we're going to end up having to modify the in, this install.sh file in order to to run it correctly, and then we'll download it. So while we download it, I will look. Should download, yeah. We'll save that file, we'll let that download, and then we'll look at another website to give us some help on how we're going to modify this install.sh. And it's a forum from Universal Robots. The search that, that came from is URSIM WSL2. There's a second bit of information. Um, as you can see, our videos for the Smart Enough Factory come up here. In fact, they're all the Smart Enough Factory videos up here. And now we can see running URSIM in Windows Subsystem for Linux. So let's look at that one. And uh, Michael Suransky wrote this excellent guide in uh, 2019, how to install a Windows Subsystem for Linux and how to install Xming, how to upgrade your Ubuntu packages, and etc. etc. So some of these steps here, where he manually installs uh, packages, uh, are actually taken out of this install.sh. I later later on I've modified or shown instructions on how to how to modify in the install.sh file itself. Um, some of these areas about QMU bin format is not required anymore, and it's fairly straightforward. But from the information that everyone else was provided, we're able to to uh, to build on that and move on a little further. So it's very excellent, excellent resources here. So just to highlight it, um, we've done this in our previous videos. This is the aim, um, how we've modified the Ubuntu install, how we've used uh, X server, this, uh, sorry, VC X server as our, uh, instead of X Ming, and what the settings are for that. Um, the extra packages we're going to need and then this is the changes that we're going to follow so we've downloaded the tar.gz file extract to our home directory and modify the install sh so this is the information about the uh, that's following on from this uh, SCAS labs guide where uh, it's been indicated that the uh, runtime environment required is open jdk 8 and that we're going to change libcurl3 to libcurl4 and then these are the extra parts I added these lines into the install sh and then essentially I forced a particular Linux version sorry I forced a particular um, Java uh, runtime environment from the JDK 8 and then the second one or the, the final changes were where the lines originally used pk exe execute as a package or a package execute command to elevate the privileges, I modified that to use sudo. So somewhere around here, um, there's a there's the extra line for sudo. So it's downloaded. That's in our downloads folder. If we if we start Windows Terminal. Be able to find that uh, here in the downloads. 
will be our file. I think it will start with UR or something or other. So we can see that we've got the a number of files. The one I've modified, and the latest one, the URSIM Linux 5.9.1. We're going to we're going to copy that one over to our uh, home directory. So that'll be cp ursim 5.9. It's Linux, sorry, my mistake, Linux. I put 9 to our home directory. No, sorry, it's our, to our home directory. I think that should do it. There we are. So now, if we were to follow along, we would extract that and in, if we go back to our information here it even tells you how to extract that so we might as well extract, use that tar uh, xvzf that's pretty much all the switches for tar and the file name it's 9 that extracts the files to our directory uisim Five nine, so CD UR sim five point nine. And then we would run install.sh. The only thing is that we need, would need to modify install.sh, so let's see what it looks like. And I'll point out the areas of, of change. So there are a number of functions. Checks Java version. If the Java version is fine, it will install. So that's the function, but let's see where it actually happens. So this is where the things start. Checks us if you're running a terminal. Checks if we need to install Java. And then here we are, here's the first change. So instead of the default runtime environment, it would be um, the install for um, Open JDK 8, might as well change it here. Open uh, JDK 8 JRE, I think that's a package name, we'll just check that. Open JDK hyphen 8, in fact, those are the two things now. And I have installed those already, so I would copy those. into here somewhere um, um, somewhere about uh, somewhere about here modify this to the correct format and then the, the lines further on that are going to require modifying the dependency now these are strings at the moment and they're going to be used well, okay this check here is to check if it's a 32-bit operating system if it is then these are installed and this is this is one that we don't need to modify because we are actually working in a 64-bit environment and then essentially it's here so this pick exec bash now I won't comment this out and do it I'll just delete this and, and fill it in here so there's two commands so instead of just apt get it's sudo apt get so I'll take that first one off here and then that at the end is piped into another uh, another command which will need sudo in front there and that should be enough to install the packages. Now most of those packages will be already installed, but that's all the changes that I would do. So Control X, yes, and then 
will run the install script and so it even gives you instructions there so so this is where we can continue following on from that so that would be uh, dot forward slash install dot sh so now it's um, uh, using sudo so it wants my password I've actually used the same passwords as as they supply on here the users you are sim uh, easy bot as the as a password I don't think I've typed that right yes I have so essentially that was it so now the proof's in the pudding if everything's running as it was let's see what uh, what we've done here so it's basically just found that we've got the newest version so pretty much everything's correct there all the newest versions we've unpacked some new files here we are these are maybe later versions or unpacking them into the directories here sorry should I say so now we are we've we're actually going we're ready to go so in order to run it if we run it without arguments we'll get the ur5e robot and so let's just see what that would look like so we're going to be running start ur sim so start hyphen ur sim sh and if everything's working we'll get the latest version we can leave that running let's see if we can remember there we go so now we've got a new terminal if we need one but let's now satisfy all the requirements here so we minimize that so the first thing we'll do is confirm our safety configuration we have a exclamation mark on our installation uh, I guess warning us that our payload is not set we really want to change our TCP but let's just leave it at that we'll turn it on exit that and we will look at if we can move our robot we will change our TCP to our baseline this looks like it's a new change to the software and here we are we have a robot running in our simulated environment and what's nice about this is whoop, yeah that's what was nice about it you can tell has it got its knickers in or not essentially what the issues are with the kinematics of the robot in the sense that <clears throat> we are quite close to this axis and in order to move the this tool center point that's what TCP stands for <clears throat> we're really going to be in a position where um, the robot can possibly end up trying to do motions that it can't actually reach so I'm just trying to just um, I think I need to need to move it. Um, yes, I've got it too close to. The, I'm moving it around too close to the center point. Um, I could maybe use a move a joint instead. So let's see if its elbow is the right one. No, it's the uh, shoulder we want to move in this direction. And let's uh, rotate the the base back round. We'll stick there. wrist up and then we'll come back to here so if we move it further away from the center line then we shouldn't it shouldn't get his knickers in a knot now while we're in this position here I just wanted to just highlight some of the nice things now this isn't going to be quite as obvious because we've got the two tool center point actually at the end of the flange um, but the nice things are when we look at the the motion of the the orientation of the tool center point that the robot works out how to create these nice motions around that and 
that's a rotation around the center point. And then a translation of the center point in the y direction. So it's going, if you look at the numbers, it's moving parallel to the base. There's no change in the other two numbers. And then up and down. If you want to have a particular position, so like uh, let's 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 put some direct values in there. Five hundred. Um, maybe make that maybe make that much less than that. So X is towards us. Y, the green one. To the right, let's make that three hundred. So it's a bit of a bigger move. And we'll drop Z down to fifty mil. No. So we have a significant difference in the in the movement there. Now, of course, this will go there um, because we have no table. We we'll say OK to that, and then now this is just like the robot, the, the real robot. We now can use the touchpad or the to move the robot to its new position or the. And so that's it. So let's let's do that motion. Still warning me about payload. That's fine. That's great. So here we are. That's a quick overview of the installing Universal Robots graphical programming environment on Windows 10. Let's see how we exit this one. Power it off just like it asks us. Remove that bring up this. So here we are from start to finish.